Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This morning we're unboxing a new Canon Maxify MB2020. And what I mean by new is the Maxify line is intended for business purposes, whereas Canon's previous Pixma line was a consumer product. So Canon's making a big splash with these four or five uh, Maxify models that they have and they're definitely making an effort to go after small business with an inkjet uh, rather than uh, la uh, laser based uh, machines that they've been selling for quite some time. One thing that you should know about this particular model is that the cost per page with standard cartridges is, approaches 20 cents a page for a uh, ISO uh, orig color original which is only 5% area coverage uh, at laser quality. Now if you if you run it at um, in draft modes or in grayscale modes you'll get considerably more ink yield and there's also XL cartridges uh, that will give you much better yield at a lower price but it still only brings down the price to about 13 cents per page which is really kind of high. Uh, so if you decide to buy this particular Maxify model, you're going to have to be really cognizant of when and where you print a laser quality uh, color prints. So let's go. I haven't unboxed a Canon in a while, and they make nice products. They always have. And I'm looking forward to seeing what this has to offer. You know, we've done a bunch of uh, Epsons and, and P office jets in the last couple of years, but uh, this ought to be fun because uh, we haven't done a Canon in a while. Now, uh, there's a diagram on how to yank it out of the box here. The box is really heavy duty. And the top of the box, we have Another box which has all the stuff you need, which is nice. It's not floating around a box anywhere. You have your uh, ink cartridges. And the black one is bigger than the color ones. Instructions in here. This is a uh, getting started guide. You have the uh, fax cable, and you have power cable, no brick. That's nice. And some other uh, ancillary information. about mobile printing and scanning, the uh, CD-ROM, and do not remove the ink ta tank until the old one, until a new one is prepared to be installed. I don't know exactly what that means, but um, I guess they don't want you to leave it laying around without ink tanks in case something dries up. Uh, warranty and important safety information. Okay, so let's put this one to the side. to take out. And let's see we have handles here on a nice sturdy paper plastic bag to take it out.
here's our here's our printer. The wall rub. We will get it up on the on the bench and proceed with the installation. Okay, on the top we have a featured matrix here and some other advertising. These things can come off. I'm going to leave them on here for now. Let's get the instructions out. Getting started. And it's a poster, poster format. And it's got both English and, and Spanish uh, instructions. And there's a lot of stuff on here. But first, it wants us to unpack it, which we already have. And then open the front cover, pull out a dingle, another, and then yank, grab the dingle, pull it out, throw it in the garbage. Step two, or step three is, there's another gazenta in there on the other side that we're supposed to pull out and throw in the garbage. Then we plug it in turn it on, select a language, etc. And so we're gonna we're gonna end up doing language and stuff before we put in the ink cartridges. And ink cartridges go all the way to five and six, close the cover. again. Well, that's actually four. We go to five. Load media. Um, align the print heads. And then set up the LAN and install the software. It doesn't look too complicated and it usually isn't. So, what do we need to take off here? You got an orange tape. Let's tr we'll start with this little clear piece over the top of the top of the screen. It doesn't, it doesn't look like it's got a touch screen because it's got navigation keys over here. All right. Okay, there's a there's an orange gazenta back here that caught my eye immediately. Now here's your power network or USB. And phone and fax line. There is no wired Ethernet. So you're going to have to have wireless if you want to put this on the network, this particular model on the network. But there's an orange isn't it here that needs to be taken out and thrown away per the instructions. And back here is your duplex unit and in case you get misfeeds that you need to get from back here or in the duplex unit itself. You just push it over and it drops down. Okay, now there's a minimal amount of tape on here, which is okay with me. I don't know how they get away with so little tape when there's like 
40 pieces on an HP, but that's all right with me. That's it. So one of them is right here. I don't know what its purpose is, but it doesn't matter. Another one here holds on this piece of plastic to cover up the scanning, scanning optic slit and keep this from damaging it, which is the document feeder. The output tray opens up, flips open, and you can remove misfeeds from in here. So it's nice and sleek looking. Uh, we have a, and this is the dangle we were talking about before, and it's a pretty easy, just take the tape, pull out the dangle, throw it away. And in here, there's a blue handle, I'm not so sure what that's all about. And we'll find out some other time, but once I turn once we turn it on the ink carrier will come come through. And on the inside the it's kind of a half tray. There's another little instruction sheet. And tells you how to it's remove and adjust adjust the um, tray for legal size paper and you're just supposed to and you can flip this up for for something envelopes like it looks like um, <laughs> the, the, right here is a nondescript button that you have to push to get it to Fit legal size paper. Um, and you put it back in there. It's going to be sticking out for legal size paper, and then you push the nondescript button again to get it closed. That's the once you find it, it's no sweat. Still not sure. Of the, of course, this is your side guide for a back guide for a couple different kinds of paper and then it's a single easy to adjust geared for your media width so let's put some paper in there while we got it out I'm doing this out of order um, well since we got the tray out let's do it anyway and as usual we're using a good quality media and you should too this is a hammer mill, it's reasonably priced, but most importantly, it's got color lock technology for ink And it can be used in a laser as well. So, the media in there. There's a thing sticking up back here. So when you put the media in, it's easy enough to do. That black thing is holding up the, the pile. So yeah, it doesn't really make a heck of a lot of sense. To me, it probably does to the camera engineers. 
and it probably has improved performance, but when you go to put the media back in, you have to make sure that, or the tray back in, you have to make sure that tilt it a little bit so that it doesn't catch, and then you need to fold this up. All right, so now that we're done with all of that, put all the tape off and everything, It wants us to plug it in, select the language, I'll press OK to start the set. So there's no, no brick, which is good. Plugged in. And let's find the power button right on top here. Maxify. Meanwhile, let's get the eight cartridges out. Okay, setup code. Support code 1303. Open the rear cover and remove any paper or foreign objects, then press OK. So it's telling me that it's a misfeed. Back here. And that. <laughs> you bet there's a misfeed all the paper all at once. That's what I get for trying to load it ahead of time. I don't get this, so let's do it in the right order. How to clear, press OK. Alright, now the language selection, we could go up and down. It's not a touch screen. There's also three buttons here. Alright, no, it's on English, OK. Press OK to start. Select OK and start the setup by referring to the getting started instructions. The HP that we just installed had a video on the screen. Okay, this has a little diagram, which is not just as good. Open the front cover. Now we have the black is bigger than the rest of them, and it's telling us to install yellow first specifically so um, there's no tear here anywhere but it's easy enough to tear downwards there's nothing to take off which is excellent uh, there's a chip here on a bong rubber bung here that's it so put in yellow first, carrier is slipped over, and it actually lines up with this ramp, so to help you get it in there. And it pushes against a switch that's hanging down up there. So and it clicks right into place. And then once you're done with that, you click next. Now it wants us to do black. The black is bigger than the rest. And it moved right, it moved over under this ramp here. So to make it easier in there, and like I said, there's a switch that activate hanging down. When you push it in, it pushes the switch out of the way. And I'm trying to put it in upside down. So it works better this way. It should work better this way. Okay, clicks into place. Click next. Not once cyan. And the colors are on the end of the cartridge here. It's moving lined up for me. 
That's weird though, there's a switch up here. Probably why they don't want you taking cartridges in and out without following the constructions. And then next, and now uh, once magenta. Okay, exit. Front cover is open, close it. Processing. Please wait momentarily. Now momentarily sounds really, really good until it says about seven minutes. So let's go to the constructions again and see what I did wrong with it, adding the paper. Okay, you're not supposed to add paper until it tells you when the head alignment is complete. And then it's going to print out, it's going to print out a test page after you load the media. And actually, what I'm seeing here is the paper is supposed to go down underneath that black thing sticking up. paper's going to fit in this year. Unless you do this, and now I don't see how legal paper is going to fit. So, if I pull that out, now the media goes in there. Fine, we forget what I talked about with this thing. needs to be moved to a letter. All the way out here says legal A4. This legal thing must be a real trip. Uh, I want legal. I want legal. Pull it out another notch. That solves the mystery. Okay, so forget about this spike back here. That's not going to do anything. That's why it misfed before. Now it fits in the tray like it's supposed to. That's why you need to re read the constructions. But, on the other hand, the tray sticks out. And thankfully, this covers it up nicely to keep objects, small pets, dust, paper clips out of the out of the paper tray, media tray. Still saying about seven minutes. And it's cleaning the print head. Okay, it's saying a head alignment is required. Load the sheet of A4 or letter paper and press OK. Uh, it's showing us how to adjust the cassette, okay. Showing us how to put the paper in, okay. Adjust the side guides, okay. Stick the cassette in, okay. Auto print head adjustment will start. C manual, okay. Processing. Please wait momentarily, about three minutes. Paper speeding. sturdy table in the world. But it's sturdier than most tables people have, but not as sturdy as a, as a desk, obviously. But it's still wiggling around all over. Uh, this table is sturdy, sturdy enough to hold up like 75 pound laser printers, so I don't know why 
it's wiggling around so much. It has something to do with this printer. Print head. Cartridge system flying back and forth with a print head, one or the other. It's teasing me by going out and go, coming out and going back in. You get like, yeah, that's going to be done, and then it sucks back in again. You only have to do this probably only once, or if you have trouble with image quality problems somewhere down the road. I think. Oh. All right. For development and marketing of products that better meet customer needs, Canon requests that information related to your Canon product be sent to Canon through the in internet. For more details, such as the next, read the description and safety and important information and select whether you will agree to send information. All right, now you're supposed to agree or do not agree right here, right now. So you're supposed to read this safety stuff, but I don't agree. Device info setting is not set up. You can set it up later in the setup menu. Okay. So here we're using these buttons down here. No, we're not. Okay. Register the information of paper loaded in the cassette. Okay. All right, so you have a paper size letter, and then you can scroll down and change what type it is. And it's letter, plain paper, so if it was something else, you would other glossy to pro luster, glossy matte envelope, inkjet, agaki. So let's go back to plain, get the drift, plain paper, okay. The information of paper loaded in the cassette has been registered. Register the paper info each time you transfer the cassette. You can turn off this function in the setup menu. So that, that's, that's nice. I mean, you can have it automatically prompt you each time you put paper and verify that you've put in the same kind or different kind of paper where you can turn it off and ignore it. So that's nice. Okay, select the connection method, wireless, LAN connection, USB, or do not connect. So I'm going to do wireless. Select a setup method, setup from the PC, etc. Recommended. Set on the printer. Okay. Do you want to connect via your access point? Yes. Searching for the access point. Now it, uh, you can either do it by entering, you know, it's a standard setup, you can enter your password manually, or you can use the WPS push button method, which I'm going to do. And then there's other setup, whatever that is. I don't choose to find out. WPS now it wants me to push the WPS button on the router, which is over here. Okay. Press and hold the WPS button. Okay. Connecting to the access point. Connected to the access point. Okay. All right, that's it. It's got little icons here. You scroll through with the keys. It's got a little, oh, and these three buttons down here. This is your Wi-Fi to check. This is your supply, how much stuff is left. And this is, tells you what, what type of paper you have in it. You push the back button. So it's, it's pretty easy. Uh, the thing that you're gonna wanna the only trouble we had was figuring out this tray and you need to open it up to the first notch and it's it's in the instructions but there's a lot of a lot of instructions for just the paper tray so that's it pretty easy nice um, feels pretty sturdy uh, 
a nice sleek design. There's a USB port up here. And uh, looks like Canon did a nice job on it. Okay, thanks for watching.